I'd like to welcome Karin Bedrosian, who is going to speak to us now. And I'd also like to promote her upcoming one woman show at the Fimbra Theatre. And she has a few words for us. Thank you, Parev. Reverend Fathers, Your Excellency, Honourable Members of Parliament, Dr. Rupa Huck, James Murray, Councillor Peter Mason, Leader of Ealing Council, our long-standing and recently retired MP, Mr. Stephen Pound, Mr. Abramyan, Leader of Armenian Community Council, dear friends, Welcome and thank you for joining us at this special event for memorialization of the sanctified martyrs of the Armenian Genocide. The Auschwitz Institute made the following announcement on 8th of April 2022. April is Genocide Awareness and Prevention Month. A time to remember the victims of genocide to learn about how atrocity violence occurs and to take action to prevent atrocity violence in our communities. This year, 2022, marks the 10th, sorry, marks the 107th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Its first phase began on the 24th of April, 1915 as the Ottoman government arrested and murdered hundreds of Armenian intellectuals and community leaders in Constantinople or modern-day Istanbul. The killing expanded into brutal massacres of the male Armenian population across Ottoman lands and the, and the, and the, deep, <laughs> and the deportation of Armenian women, children and the elderly into the Syrian desert. Around one and a half million Armenians were killed. Over 80% of the total Armenian population in the Ottoman Empire. The wide scale extermination and subsequent lack of accountability inspired Polish lawyer Raphael Lemkin to conceptualize the term of genocide, a word he coined in 1944 and campaign for its criminalization. We are grateful of our members of parliament and dignitaries for joining the Armenian community as it remembers and memorializes the loss of so many and for joining us in the call for the recognition of this tragedy as a bona fide genocide. A history of unaddressed mass atrocities can hinder much needed healing and reconciliation two vital aspects of sustainable long-term prevention. There is no passage of time that limits our recognition of the truth of the criminal acts perpetrated against Armenians. On the 107th commemoration of the Armenian Genocide, we stand with the chorus of voices worldwide who are calling those criminal acts by their rightful name, genocide. This recognition goes beyond simply the importance of historical and conceptual accuracy, but also points to a future of truth-based prevention, in which all would-be perpetrators recognize that denial of genocide will not stand as a protective buffer for their atrocities. There is a need to embed school-based practices and policies that can contribute to respectful, inclusive, and resilient societies. This can be achieved by teaching the truth. Well, would the government in the UK take the lead on that by including the Armenian Genocide in the curriculum? Our government has failed to acknowledge the Armenian Genocide for too long. The Foreign and Commonwealth Office uses every trick in the book to avoid acceptance of that truth. President Biden changed the, that same attitude in the USA by making the following declaration. The organized campaign of ethnic cleansing against Armenians from 1915 to 1917 was indeed a genocide. 
In doing so, he is sending a strong message to the world that history must be acknowledged and faced if one is to move forward into the future. In that same spirit, I call on the Turkish government to recognize the facts of history and understand that accepting responsibility is not an act of weakness, but one of profound strength. I hope that such an acknowledgement, if offered, can be an opening for dialogue and reconciliation that will help build the foundation of trust necessary for Turks and Armenians to move forward together into a brighter future of cooperation and mutual respect. As we mark this anniversary, anniversary of the start of the Armenian Genocide, we pray that humanity's future will no longer be scarred by the evils of war and genocide, by violence and hate. Rather, that all people will seek understanding, tolerance and cooperation. Surely these past few years and the turbulations brought to every nation of the world have shown us that what unites all people is much greater than what divides us. May the memory of those lost in the Armenian Genocide be a blessing, an inspiration to all who seek a better world and more peaceful future. Thank you. I would like to now welcome Andre Ohanian, who will also do a reading. Hello, my name is Andre Ohanian. I am a British Armenian and fourth generation survivor of the 1915 Armenian Genocide. My great great grandfather, Todos Igid Bashan, was, was brutally killed amongst the other 1.5 million Armenians during the Armenian Genocide by the Ottoman Turks. His son, a five year old boy, was one of the 500,000 Armenian women and children who were forcibly removed out of their homes and marched through unbearable conditions into the desert of Syria. He ended up in Sudan, 2,500 miles away from his home, seeking safe refuge, only with the clothes on his back. But to this day, the British government has not condemned the Turks for their for their crimes. Despite formal censure and recognition of the Armenian genocide by President Biden last year, Pope Francis seven years ago, the United Nations in 1948, 31 other countries, international genocide scholars, and most importantly, by Eden Council 2010, with the help of Eden Labour. Thank you, Mr. Pound and, and Eden Labour. Armenian, gen Armenian genocide denial is a slap in the face to all Armenian people by my government. But it's fatal because you know that history repeats itself. A genocide denied is a genocide repeated. On behalf of all British Armenians, I ask my Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, whose own great-grandfather, Kamal Ali, was lynched and hung by Turkish mobs for denouncing the killing of Armenians, decided history by condemning and recognizing the very genocide for which his great-grandfather sacrificed his life to seek justice. The UK government, rather than supporting Turkey's denials, should be pressuring Turkey to come to terms with its past by recognizing by recognizing the murder of my great great grandfather Todos and 1.5 million Armenians as genocide. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Ahead of further speeches, I would like to ask Father Chinook for a prayer. <coughs> Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. 
O Christ our God, guardian and hope of all your faithful, protect and keep in peace your faithful people under the shadow of your holy and venerable cross, and especially bless, O Lord, your faithful people here in the UK, Armenians and non-Armenians, friends and non-friends. Deliver and save us from visible and invisible enemy. Make us worthy, thankfully glorify you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and always and forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. I would now like to invite Rupa Shah for a few words. Rupa Huck. Huck. Oh my God. Rupa Huck, I apologize. Thank you, um, friends. Shnorha Kalem. Barev. Look, it's good to be here today. Obviously, someone's had a word with upstairs, lovely weather, but we are gathered for a somber occasion. Uh, 107 years ago, we were in the midst of the Great War. That was meant to be the war to end all wars, and yet we know that up to 1.5 million. Armenians, uh, I mean, this country doesn't call it a genocide, I don't know what they do call it, a um, atrocities, tragedy, that kind of thing, but let's call it for what it is. A year ago when we met here, we were, uh, we were commemorating the fact that President Biden had recognized this as a genocide, a long-standing US policy he had enacted for the first time, and there's a long list of countries here, France, Germany, Canada, if they can all do it. I think British government has to have a backbone and call it for what it is. Uh, 1.5 million men, women, children. And um, look, I don't want to tell you about your own history. Obviously, you know this a lot better than I do. But in the post-Brexit world, our country is so desperate for trade deals with Turkey. We know this happened under the Ottoman Empire that, you know, they, they need to grow a pair or grow a spine, should I say. Um, and look, I don't want to be all doom and gloom. We have a fantastic Armenian community in the London Borough of Ealing. So I, I keep seeing people I recognize in here. Vishak Ohanian from the Hayashen Center in Acton. They do brilliant stuff, cultural and community things. I hold my advice surgery there even. We also have people from the Navastratian Center in Northfields Avenue at the end of my road for many, many years. Um, we have, who else do we have? Annette Moscoffian. Where are you, Annette? Behind me. So, Annette, who I nearly, nearly was in, um, uh, who I nearly went with the other day. Uh, I unfortunately was hit down by the big C, not, not cancer, but COVID. So, uh, I was unable to go to Yerevan. There was a delegation of MPs. This time next year when we meet, I hope to have seen Yerevan for myself. And I have been raising... And please, guys, I'm your servant in Parliament, that is. So if... Oh, OK. <laughs> People are going to hold me to this. But I have asked questions about Artsakh, the republic that still needs uh, its own independence. And this is a hangover from the Starling days, isn't it? I've asked questions on Nagorno Karabakh and this, you know, Russian brokered, not really deal. Um, and we've seen what the Russians are doing now, haven't we? So. Um, you know, we have a fantastic diaspora, whether it's Charles Aznavour, whether it's David Dickinson, whether it's uh, Dr. Ar uh, Ar Ara Dazai, who was the uh, chief surgeon for a long time. The Kardashians, again, they are a brilliant example of the Armenian diaspora. So, look, I'm proud of our community here. 
I'm proud of what you guys are doing. Let me know what more we should be doing. And, you know, our government really does need... Ealing Council was leading the way on this. The 2010 administration, the apricot tree that we're in the shadow of. Uh, Ealing Council has long commemorated this for what it is. Um, so, Shnorha, Kalem, and Barov to you all. I'd now like to welcome Peter Mason. Thank you very much. Um, in every generation, there is the incredible capacity for good. In every generation, we believe ourselves to be enlightened, and we look to the future of possibility and hope. But in every generation also exists the capacity to do very terrible things. And as somebody from a community that has experienced what it is like to live with the collective trauma of genocide, I know, and we know, as a borough, that the collective trauma that still sits with the Armenian people is a defining element of the diaspora to this very day. I'm very proud that Ealing Council was amongst one of the first Boroughs, London Boroughs, local authorities in 2010 under the current administration to recognise the genocide for what it was, a genocide. And we have, together with the Armenian community over the last 12 years, worked to ensure that that message is spread across local government and we can build a movement that acknowledges genocide as genocide. There is still so much work yet to be done to ensure that that message is spread not just amongst local government but national government too and that we ensure that we truly and genuinely as a generation learn those lessons so that the words never again really do mean something I really want to thank the community for the work that you are doing right now to ensure that refugees fleeing from Ukraine both amongst the Armenian community there but also from other communities are given both safe passage and safe homes in our borough. That is a testament to the solidarity and community that we have in Ealing, but also to the values and the spirit that I know each and every one of you approach that huge gargantuan task that we have together as a community and as a borough going forward. I hope in the coming weeks and months to be able to meet with the community. I'm very much looking forward from, to my first opportunity to, to meet with you all, but also to enter into a dialogue about how we can ensure that the genocide commemoration can be made permanent. We have a wonderful apricot tree, but I hope that we can go even further in ensuring that when we gather again in the coming years and months and the years ahead, that message will truly be learned and we can commemorate together stronger as a whole borough and as a whole country to ensure that we put right the wrongs of those generations that have come before us. Thank you very much. And I'd now like to welcome James Murray. Thank you very much for giving me the chance to say just a few words. Um, I've been the MP for Ely North for a little over two years and we all know that the first year that I was the MP, like for everyone across Ealing and beyond, was a very hard year for all of us, not being able to come together, not being able to meet, only meeting online. Uh, being an MP, uh, trying to do that from behind a laptop, uh, is no way to be an MP. Uh, the way to be an MP um, is to meet people, is to talk to people, is to sit and listen to people and what matters to them and their experiences, what matters to them from their history, from their families and from their communities. And that's why for me, coming here today and meeting so many people who I may have spoken with on the phone or sent emails or letters to, but being here with you face to face, listening to you about your experiences, about your community, about your history, is so important um, to me. I've learned everything I know about Armenia and about the history of the Armenian people from people I represent and that is what being an MP, being a representative is about. It's about listening and understanding and being your representative and 
the Armenian people are at the forefront of my thoughts on many days, but none more so than today when we remember the horrendous events of 1915. And I wanted to say to you that I'm here with my colleagues to be a friend to the Armenian people, to be a friend to the Armenian people here in Ealing, who are such a fantastic part of our community, to thank you for educating me as your MP uh, about your history uh, and about what matters to you, and to know that in myself and my colleagues on the council and uh, my fellow member of parliament, Rupa Huck, uh, you have true friends uh, for the Armenian people. Thank you. And I'd now like to welcome Stephen Pound. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, can I just say, the respect that is shown for your community is represented by the people we have here present. And one person who hasn't been mentioned is uh, Daniel Lillis, um, who is at the back there. He represents Baroness Caroline Cox, who some of you may know as the Angel of Artsakh, um, who has, I believe, visited Nagorno-Karabakh over 100 times, considerably more than 100 times. It puts my visits to Artsakh in rather poor light. But look, we're very, very grateful. And also very grateful to have the leader of the council, um, Peter, here, because he, I hope, will agree that what, it, what we really need here is a Hachka stone here in front of this tree, uh, permanently. And whereas here we have a temporary uh, representation of the genocide memorial in Yerevan, which I have visited and I have laid a wreath there. This is only temporary. And I think what is important, the word that we need to use over and over again when it comes to talking about Armenia, is permanent. Permanence. Deep, deep roots. Global, national, international roots. Permanence. And I hope that that stone, which has been a symbol of Armenian faith since 301 AD and is to be found all over the former Eastern and Western Armenia. I hope that we can have that one day. Peter, no pressure. <laughs> but I'd also like to say, listening to uh, Karina and to Andre is a sobering and in some ways almost a terrifying experience. Sometimes, my friends, if you're not a member of the family, and I'm obviously not Armenian, you can actually, sometimes you can see more of that family from outside. All of you are Armenians, you know, you know the community, you know it well. But listening to those words, and listening to that young man, Andre, speaking there, I suddenly realized, as if I hadn't known it before, that there is something truly remarkable, something uniquely special, something unbreakable, something that can never be destroyed, and that is the Armenian spirit. Because although today we look backwards, we look backwards at that awful, terrible nightmare of 1950, we think of those bodies driven into the desert, dying of thirst in Anatolia, we think of those horrors, but we also see before us here the Armenian scout, the future, the future of this community. And I have to say, there are those people, your enemies, who have tried to destroy Armenia, but as long as this heart is beating, this young Armenian heart is beating strong, there will always, always be an Armenia. There will never, ever be a time when we can say, who now remembers the Armenians. We don't need to remember the Armenians. We know the Armenians. The Armenians are all around us. And it is not my generation only. It is your generation. And you have on your shoulders a great weight you have the weight of a history of a nation that has never, ever been beaten, that has never been unbowed, that has never, ever fallen to the conquerors. It has suffered the most awful things, but Armenia is still here. You are here. And every Saturday morning when you meet at uh, Ealing Field School, then I want all of you to be proud, so proud, as if I think you really are, of being Armenian. Because that is a wonderful gift, and you must never, ever forget. But now, look. We're faced, as we look around the world today, with examples of cruelty of a national scale. We see horrors taking place. And I cannot believe that I'm the only one, and I think it was mentioned earlier on. We see what is happening in Ukraine, and we think of the problems of a mighty neighbor. Today, even today, across the border, 
Azeri troops are firing at peaceable, peaceable Artsakh residents. Bullets are being fired, people are being killed, even today. Where is the publicity? Where are we talking about this? How is Azerbaijan, how is Turkey, how are the Azeri people allowed to get away with this? How are they allowed to get away with this provocation? How are they allowed to get away with this cross-border fighting, this murdering across the border? We, and I have to say, did my heart good to hear Rupert Huck and James Murray say that they will be raising this flag in Parliament because we have to get the message out there. Good deeds flourish in the dark. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. And the best that we can do in this British Parliament, not that I'm allowed there anymore, but I can look at it from the outside. What we can do is to actually say the truth. Speak truth to that Azeri aggression. Speak truth to those Azerbaijani cross-border murderers. Speak truth to what is happening to the great Armenian people. But even without that, you will always triumph because you are the unbeatable people. You are the unbreakable people. You are the permanent people. You are the permanent Armenian people. And wherever you are in the world, in California, in Argentina, and all over Paris, wherever you are, there will be a little bit of Armenia. And Armenia will never, ever die. Armenia will never, ever go away. Armenia will flourish as this beautiful tree. And I was there the day we planted it. This tree is not just beautiful above the ground, it is beautiful below the ground because it has deep roots. Deep roots in our country, in our community, in our borough here in Ely. So may I say, let this tree flourish, but above all, let the Armenian people flourish now and forever. The unbreakable Armenian people of whom I am so honored to be your servant. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Stephen. I would now like to invite Ambassador Nersesyan for a couple of words. Thank you. And thank you very much, Mr. Khan, for your extremely inspiring words today. But I wanted to thank, first of all, all our friends, members of Parliament, Reverend Father, Mr. Abrahamian, and the Armenian community here in the United Kingdom for coming today here in front of this beautiful Armenian apricot tree to commemorate the memory of our victims, 1.5 million victims of the Armenian genocide in the Ottoman Empire in 1915. But first I wanted to express my admiration for these children for so patiently not only waiting here, these beautiful children, rounds of applause for them please. But also, as Mr. Pound said, they are the witness of the endurability, of resilience of the Armenian people. They are the future and they are the proof that the ones who perpetrated Armenian genocide couldn't succeed. They never succeeded. Even though they eradicated the Armenian nation on their homeland, they never succeeded. Armenian people is whatever they live. Armenian people is the Republic of Armenia, modern Republic of Armenia, is modern Artsakh and the worldwide strong Armenian diaspora, including here in the United Kingdom. And I'm proud and happy to represent the Republic of Armenia in this great country. One year ago, this year, I was in Washington, D.C., representing Armenia as in my previous capacity. And I witnessed, together with the Armenian community, of the United States, uh, an act of historic magnitude. When we were gathered in front of the Armenian embassy at Khachkar, and by the way, your point is very well taken, Mr. Pound, that about the Khachkar, I think we need to follow up what you recommend. The leaders behind <laughs> yes. But standing in front of the Khachkar, when we received the news about the recognition of the Armenian genocide by President Biden, and we worked hand in hand by, with the Armenian community and with all friends in the United States for that historic act. I think that very act and previously the recognition by the Congress opens a major gateway for the recognition worldwide and I very much hope and believe here in also at some point in the United Kingdom because the people of the United Kingdom knows very well knows very well that very Prime Minister Gladstone at the time or James Bryce, Lord Bryce at the time or Arnold Toynbee, world-renowned historian at the time coined this historic event as a crime against humanity 
here in the United Kingdom that knew the reality. And also the government of the United Kingdom at the time made a statement together with the government of Russia and France at the time saying that a crime against humanity was committed in 1915 against the Armenian people. So today, the recognition of Armenian genocide is not only an attempt addressing the past atrocity and recognizing and calling the things by their own name. It's also very much about the prevention because today modern Armenia faces the same aggression from the same perpetrators. We have witnessed, as Mr. Pound very aptly mentioned, Azerbaijani aggression back in 2020 against the people of Artsakh and against the people of Armenia. The recognition of Armenian genocide is not only about the past, it is about modern Armenia. It is about contributing to the security of modern Armenia. By the recognition, international community opens up a broader prospect for securing Armenia from its neighborhood and from the repetition of the uh, of the, all those who have similar attempts. But I can say one thing, that modern Armenia, irrespective of all the difficulties, and modern Artsakh, is strong and resilient, and we will endure. And thank you for your word of permanence, Mr. Pound. This is something that the people of Armenia have in their hearts. This is our very soul. And we here, with these children, once again, I want to return and say to them that they witness that we have future. The Armenian people, wherever they are, they have a great future, irrespective of all of the difficulties we are currently experiencing in Armenia, the aggression from our neighbors and all of the difficulties. Armenia is strong and Armenia will be strong. And from that positions only, we will create security in our neighborhood. We are well-intentioned people. We are people of faith and in our, we believe in God and we believe in our good faith to have good neighbor relations with and decent relations with all the people. And we will contribute wherever we are to the successes of these countries where we live. We are thankful to all those countries who provided safe refuge to the Armenian people, be it here in the United Kingdom, in the USA, Argentina, Australia, wherever we are Armenians. We contribute to the success of these countries and we are thankful to these countries. So once again today I wanted to thank and say that the the campaign for genocide recognition should continue and I thank all those who put enormous efforts for the recognition of the Armenian genocide. And I very much hope that we will have also the chance to see the things to be called by their own name also in, by this great country. Thank you very, very much, all of you and the Armenian community and all our friends. Thank you. I'd like to invite Arman Abramyan, for, who is the chair of the Armenian Community Council. Dear all, dear friends, dear community members, before concluding our uh, commemoration event today, on behalf of the Armenian Community Council of the UK, I would like to express our most sincere thanks and gratitude to our uh, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Nersesian, to our esteemed friends, members of Parliament, Dr. Rupa, uh, Member of Parliament for Ealing Central and Acton, Mr. James Murray, Member of Parliament for Ealing uh, North, uh, Mr. Stephen Pan, retired MP, but an avid uh, friend of Armenian people. I cannot emphasize this enough. He's been a long-standing friend and supporter of Armenian cause and Armenian also. Uh, Mr. Peter Mason, leader of the Ealing Council, again, a valued friend who's been supporting us over the past few months and hopefully all through the future. Uh, Mr. Daniel Lillis, uh, representing uh, Baroness Cox, who's again uh, has been supporting us in Armenia and Artsakh, uh, especially uh, highlighting the conditions and the atrocities committed by Azerbaijan in Artsakh. Uh, these friends have attended our uh, memorial service to honor the memory of the one and a half million victims of the 
genocide committed by the Turkish government in 1950. We are very grateful. Uh, we hope your support will continue and at some point in not too distant the future we'll manage to persuade our UK government to acknowledge uh, the, and accept the genocide as it was. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to just finish by inviting you to sing the Armenian National Anthem, after which uh, anyone who wishes, please approach the tree and uh, lay your flowers of respect. Thank you.